In this module, we will talk about the concept of motions. So the first question is, why do we care about the motions? We care about the motions because we want to be able to predict where things would be after a certain amount of time. So for example, I have a block over here on a flat surface and it may be moving with some velocity, let's say V0. We want to be able to tell maybe what's this velocity after T amount of time. Or it could be that after it has moved by a certain distance, delta X, what's this new velocity? So we're interested in predicting that. But before we talk about the nitty gritty details of uh, you know, what kind of motions you have, whether you have translation, you have rotation or a combination or a planar motion versus a spatial motion, or whether you have constant velocity motion or whether you have constant acceleration motion or whether you have non-constant acceleration motion. And these are all different possibilities for a motion. Let's put things in perspective and talk about what we have done so far. So in a previous module, we have talked about forces and moments. And in this particular module, essentially what we have talked about is the concept of force and the concept of moment. And we have given proper definition for both of them. And we have also seen that we, when we apply equilibrium analysis, when we assume that a system of rigid bodies is in equilibrium, then we can compute some of the unknown forces and the moments. And central to that analysis is the Newton's second law, which says that sigma f is equal to mass times acceleration. So on a system of rigid bodies, if you sum all the forces, then that's equal to mass times acceleration. Now, if things are in equilibrium, then we say acceleration is zero, and that results into sigma f being zero. And we also have the other equation, which is sum of the moment about any point equal to zero. And these were the two fundamental equations that we used in that particular module. But forces and moments can give rise to two other things. They can give rise to deformation, and they can give rise to motions. So when we talk about motions, we are basically talking about gross motions, the motions that are clearly visible. Now you might say that technically speaking, deformation is also a motion, but it's a motion of really molecules at a very small scale. So we're not really talking about gross motion there. So we've also talked about how to relate forces and the moments with the deformation. And that we did in the previous module on stresses and strain. So we could relate the two quantities. Then the third quantity, the motion, can also result from the application of force in the moments. So the first thing we will talk about is, what is the idea behind motions? Now the interaction of these three concepts over here, the concept of forces and moments, concept of deformation, and concept of motions, individually or their interaction gives rise to various engineering subjects that you will study in your career over here. So when you are talking about applying equilibrium analysis on system of uh, particles or rigid bodies, then you're essentially studying statics. So when you take 260 class, MEC 260 over here at Stony Brook, you will be mostly performing equilibrium analysis. So in other words, you'll be given certain forces in the moments and by using these two equations over here, you'll be able to compute remaining unknown forces and moments. In mechanics of solid class, or also called strength of materials class, strength of materials and in some other schools it may be called solid mechanics or mechanics of solid class you'll be studying interaction between the forces and the deformation that arise from it so the, the things that you learned about normal stresses normal strain shear stresses shear strain and how do you relate stresses and strain quantities using elasticity modulus or certain other critical parameters that you find in the stress strain plot that's all per view or the subject of strength of materials class. So, so you've seen a little glimpse of what you'll be studying in that class in previous module. Now, when we talk about the motions alone, so when we talk about the motions alone, without any consideration, without any consideration for forces or moments that give rise to them, then we are essentially talking about the subject of kinematics. 
that's the subject of kinematics so kinematics is concerned with just the study of the motions okay so we're talking about displacement velocity and acceleration and those are your primary kinematic quantities so we can write them as you know delta r as a change in, in position vector uh, delta v which would give rise to the acceleration and these are the kinds of things that we are studying in the kinematics now when you relate motions with the forces so when you're relating motion with the forces when you're relating these two quantities you are studying a subject called kinetics subject called kinetics so in other words in kinetics sigma f equal to mass times acceleration is of paramount importance kinematics and kinetics combined these two subjects combined give rise to dynamics so when you take 262 a class that i teach mostly in the summer as a purely online class uh, you are basically studying kinetics and kinematics together so this is sort of the overall picture of some of the engineering mechanics subjects that you'll be taking either at stony brook or anywhere else in this particular module we are concerned with motions so we will talk about different kinds of motions.